It's the weekly 3030 trading list on the ASX. We're reviewing the 30 best momentum companies over the last quarter and those that have had the best improvement in the last week, what we call the 3030 trading list. Gary Glover has been through both lists to pull out his favorite charts to show us where the entry points are, where the best trading opportunities are, and what's happening in the markets. Good morning, Gary. How are you? Good. Coming from downtown sunny no i oh, sorry sunny sydney today so uh a little, little bit of a bright background so uh but hey the market is just as bright so uh it so is matching it is it is fitting indeed to sound like a rock star not knowing what city you're in but uh well if you watch your tuesday reports you are definitely a rock star at the moment because for the last couple of weeks you've been saying look it seems like we could be roaring into the end of the year and that's just what's happening so we're not delving into those and the cycles that you normally cover on the Tuesdays. Today, we're going through these momentum leaders and what we call the launch pad. So when you look at this list this week, you say the market's pretty bright and colorful like the background. What are you seeing in the markets when you're looking at these lists, these momentum leaders, what's coming through to you in these in stocks? Uh, I'm seeing a BCP marathon here, uh, Chris. So uh, it's, um, there's just so many awesome vcp sort of setups here uh, in the last few weeks there so it's funny i sort of i keep a vcp sort of file uh so i got save a watch list of them and you know some daily some weekly ones and they just all up and out of the range here at the moment so they're all just going crazy there it was a weird week because sort of monday tuesday wednesday market was just sort of congesting sort of tight tight so i was actually down monday down tuesday down wednesday I thought, three days in a row um, if I'm down three days in a row, I'm normally get stopped out of things. But it was just the whole thing was just tightening, 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 and then on Thursdays, ah, just you know, popped out of the range there. So everything's just popped, you know. So I think yesterday was probably the biggest day I've had being there was uh, on my account. I think I had like I saw five percent move on my portfolio yesterday, which is just uh, cool. But um, but yeah, just acid, just did yeah, so that. Like the market sort of cooled up from these stocks and they all just sort of popped out at the same time. And it was really interesting because the bigs have been running pretty hot, but we just saw that sort of second tier to the stocks and maybe a little bit more growth, a little bit more um, that sort of mid cap really, really sort of powered through. So, to say, we normally sort of start with the bigs, mid cap sort of throw, you know, sort of flow through the middle and then the smalls at the end here. So, you know, if you think about the market too, like everyone's been negative. Hobble kick out. Um, so we're now starting, you know, we're starting to get good news. So everyone's starting to turn here, uh, positivity coming back in the market. So, you know, like all the mayors are just, yeah, turn bullish the last few days here. So well, that, that's always a bit of a warning sign. But, you know, normally when you sort of get the turn like that, you, you'll get a bit more of a run there. You're just going to be, you'll see things sort of, should be a little bit of volatility here. There should be maybe some of the top tier, which is run a bit hot. Maybe you'll see that cool off a bit maybe the second tiers are running a bit more than the third tier so but there's still be plenty of setups there even if though markets had a pretty good move there even if it sort of just grinds it's sort of slightly higher here should still be plenty of setups there popping range and stuff there so that's what i saw throughout the um the setups here so let me get straight into um got down the number nine here um just most other ones are pretty small there's a couple of little uh takeovers near as well so hard to trade some of those ones. but this one here's another takeover vht but look this one's worth having a look at because we've definitely seen like a lot of these you know these vcp setups here we can see how we've gone down a low there tightened up rallied again tightened up rallied again and if you look you actually look closely there before this big volume here in the last few days that volume was sort of constructive on the on all those up moves and it was drying up on the downside there and it sort of chopped through and then it really just sort of sat on that 75 cents so this sort of sat on top of that previous peak here yeah. so that was a really good sign there so this, this was sort of one this was in my vcp file and i didn't trade this one personally and sort of can't be you know in 2030 stocks unfortunately uh well not not for me anyway um but um but yeah this this is a really good vcp setup there and another silver sort of up there. So this is one of the few takeover stocks that did set up early with the VCP and, and trained pretty nicely there. Um, ERD, which is the next one there, uh, number 10 as well. 
that also had a BCP in there as well. Chris sort of came out of the base there, um, started to build here. Then we got a little BCP tighten up in there. And then, then we did break out of that little setup there. We saw when you're, when you're seeing these sort of big volume lines come through here, that's what we're looking for. We sort of want to see those strokes so that are starting to move up here. But then we're starting to see big lines of volume people getting placed here. And see there, we broke, basically broke up on this day here. Haven't looked back there since then. So just another VCP as well in there. And, um, BML and the 16 on the list there. A couple of little BCPs in there. Probably sort of some smaller ones there. Um, did have this little pop here after the BCP and then uh, big volume there, even the next day. And then it, then it did do a little coil there and see how the volume just dried up again, other pullback. So it's just that sort of classic we're talking about. You know, running up here hot, big volume, then coiling back here, uh, either back to your 10 or your 20 day moving average, then um, and we, and we jump in again. So that still looks okay there. Um, but I mean, it's a creator's paradise there at the moment. It's just, you know, um, wish I had an account three times the size here or three different accounts so I could trade three different sort of sets, sort of stocks here. But um, yeah, just sort of so much happening here. You just can't trade them all. You just got to, um, We'll get the best setups here. This was a cracking uh, VCP, which we covered probably quite a few weeks ago. This VWE uh, sort of coiled in here nice there. And then we sort of started to break in there. We started to see these lines of volume there. And the whole thing you know, capped up here. So once it's broken out of this range there, I mean, you could probably, what you're looking for there is probably that day there on a, on a bit of volume, maybe. So you can kind of maybe give you the little load sheet as um, you know, Benny refers to it. Um, and then once you're sort of breaking that wave there, you're sort of following that through. That's that's kicked on here. And then look at this little congestion here, Chris, as well. So this is right up here. I had a little maybe one day of sort of one day of sort of selling and then it wasn't even wasn't even much of a selling day really. So next day it pulled back and then the volume came straight back in. And then we've gone sideways and you look at that. So that whole churn there. So we had some lines of stock go through here. And this whole churn in here, no selling at all. There. Yeah. We can see a stock which is really, really, uh, really run impulsively. Goes through this little breather there. You're just seeing no distribution at all whatsoever. That's a little, that's a classic little high type lag there. So that'd be pretty close to about, what, 55 cents up to 90. I'm pretty sure that'd be. Yeah, Volkowski calls for 75% or more. Definitely more than 75%. Holding yeah. it in the top, the coils have been in the top third of that range. Absolutely. And it's, as you said, there's no volume in that all that flag no 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 selling at all um uh, one that does hurt me a little bit is this uh tua Gee, that's you know there's a, just a perfect cup and handle there talked about there a few weeks back so um this is one that i sort of tried to trade there i just didn't have enough capital at the time there and i kind of mess around a little bit there trying to i, I tried the low sort of cheat in here and then it popped on me and i didn't chase it um thought it might have congested back here again but uh, these good patterns, they generally don't give it too many chances to get in. Once they sort of start moving up, they're really going to get amongst it. But I'm what about this sort of 10 day moving average on this one? Yeah. <clears throat> so that's the thing. It's sort of, uh, I think, um, Keller Maggie sort of talked about the 10 and the 20. So you say the strongest stocks will hold the 10. Definitely see that's the case here. You know, once it's broken out here, you know, it's just, it's just nestled along the 10 here the whole time here. So that, that's really good. So that's you know, it's a beautiful cup and handle. Textbook sort of set up here. Comes back and holds the 10 here the whole time. That's, you know, that, that's, you know, just go and study that chart there every time you sort of see that, you know. Um, it's, it's worth those traders and stuff there. I've sort of got still in a bit of a habit of actually um, starting to try and, if I see a really good setup, rather than sort of, I'd try and string, uh, screen capture it, maybe put it in a library or just sort of, both patterns there or the best setups there but even actually writing I, I keep it I've been building a diary there Chris as well so um, when I see a good setup like that I'll, I'll actually write it down this is how it handles the setup there I might even reference this one but then I'll, I'll describe the sort of setup as well so if I sort of see that again you know what you're sort of looking for but it's just as you know I guess it's sort of proven there if you write things down I would tend to sort of remember them a bit better there um as we know, sort of, you know, human beings are sort of fraught with danger with their memory, I think. You know? 
as we highlighted a few weeks ago, like thirty percent of that memory is like completely hacked up. Fifty three percent are like embellished. So that's why we should write things down and have a process. So uh, uh but yeah, cracking uh cracking setup there at TUA. Um even the CYL too, that was the other one too that uh, I actually did trade this one. Uh exited a bit early here, but that's been a nice little that's a nice little BCP in here. Um, broke out of that little range. It didn't do a bit of a back test there, but then it sort of continued on there. Once it sort of broke out again, it's held the 20 here. So right back on the 20 here again. So it might, might still be okay there. Probably a little, so it's a little heavier in there. So that's probably not what you want to see. You can see heavy, heavy back to back. Even that's sort of heavy as well. So it's a bit more selling there. So those golds there, which I'll be pretty keen on, um, it's been a bit more selling in there than I would like to see. This as well, for like a lot of them. So, um, so I've, I've sort of, you know, I, I held a few. I sold, I sold some of the heat there previously. Uh, the first day down, I trimmed a few more, and I only held one position there. And then the other day, we had a big pop. I was like, just decided just to get rid of the last one. There, I just, just saw a few characteristics I sort of saw in some of the golds there, which I didn't like. Uh, and I, I reckon, you know, when this this market's on fire here, there's so many A, A type setups. Why sort of stay in a you know something you're like a B you know sort of maybe maybe it's not as robust as it was looking a bit a little bit more selling in there so you know if I can go for sort of something which is showing a little bit of weakness either something else is which is just red hot then I'll just I'll just switch you know this is sort of like some of the best traders they talk about you know, looking through all your trades and then you know, if you do see something awesome probably the best thing to do is you know. To get rid of your weakest, get rid of your worst you know, trades as well. So there's no, no, there's no harm in actually sort of cycling out your less yeah, trades yeah. for a bit. Yeah, it might break a few rules there because obviously you're sort of exiting early there, but um, you know, but it's not you know showing. We're starting to show a little bit of uh, weakness there, or sure, not not as sort of um, as robust as that sort of first started out there. And you get, you get something else which is setting up a, like an A class at a high risk reward and um, in a sector which is on fire, then yeah, I still think you can sort of sort of swap into those sectors there. Or even looking at the ones you're in too, like I've sort of gone, uh, like one thing when, when I did the, my review there recently was that I wasn't trading the, heart, the A's with a bit with enough size. I was sort of, you know, only five or ten percent. So I, I, I can go up on a set of rules. Uh, Allow me to go to twenty percent weighting and stuff, but really, really set up possible. So, so I've sort of definitely got a bit more concentrated. Um, yeah, and then when you get a big thing like the other day, um, and all your stocks will all coil up and then they spring out. You're concentrated in those right whiles. Even you know, you don't. I mean, probably about like a five percent, whatever your portfolio for a single day. That's just that that, that, that makes you know. That's, Changes uh changes the month and possibly the yeah, year. it does. It just sort of gets you, you know. I and mean, then if you get a bit more, you can get a bit of olive fruit from that. Um, yeah. So, so that's what we sort of got to work towards there. Um, Templar Webster's been pretty robust. Um, this was this this was the other thing. Apart from the VCP, we saw a few game changer trades this in the last month there. So socks it will probably maybe down on their knees a little bit. So um, we have like a, a earnings or an update which is really positive. So I think. TPW had that gap and run there. So you can see that we gapped up on big volume. And it just kept going there. Uh, Iris as well, which was sort of um, struggling a bit, not you know, not performing, had a pretty negative update. And then it comes out with a positive update. Things aren't so bad. Then stock runs there as well. We saw, you know, 4DX had the same game change. I think Elvis as well, everyone expecting the worst. And then had a pretty good run and popped as well. So yeah, just so many of those sort of good setups there. I mean, that Elders is a it's a good one there because it actually sort of popped out of that range there on good news. And then since then, the whole thing's just tightened up here. So, you know, this uh, this is this is actually one that I'm pretty heavy um, because, I, you know, I was able to add in here the really, really tight stop here. So if I'm wrong, I'll, I'm going home with a tiny loss. If this thing breaks out here and just and it goes for like this sort of run here, out of here, then, well, so it's um, so it's a trades that I like. I like to sort of see them run hot, have a bit of a tight, you know, um, 
what's what's Calaragi saying? You know, sort of you know, loose is for losers and uh, you know, tight, tight is for the sort winners. So just want to see that you know nice strong strength, have the pause, and then then firm up again. So looks pretty good here. The other um, I don't know the BCP there was um, SLX. So this this is pretty good here. So look at this BCP, probably probably a little bit more. Um, Filling here on the weekly there. So pull back that first leg down, pull back second leg, third here, fourth. The whole thing's just tightening up here. So it's almost like a little descending sort of triangle, but then it's breaking out here. So you've got to wait for this B my break here. But once it started to get over here, you've got to believe that. That's, that's a pretty good setup there. So drill into a daily. So we just started to see this. Like this this was on my BCP list because that's a massive BCP. So anything BCP, anything that sort of can get to guessing. Holding up relative to the strength, put it in your BCP file. Just just monitor it there. Again, for me, it was just it's a case of there was just everything was just you know there must have been twenty trades there, Chris. So I, I was in my sort of five or six, so um, well, I just couldn't, couldn't spread across there. But uh, yeah, this was a good setup as well. It's a good volume there. Once it, you know started to see a bit of volume come in, and, and you've sort of broken above it, but you wait there and what's going on there. So this still looks pretty good. That weekly is pretty running right what's there. So uh, that's a that's a pretty good setup. Uh, so I've seen seeing lots of BCP like that, even on the weekly. So the good ones on the daily, so the sort of shorter time frame, but some bigger ones on the weekly as well. Um, SLX, I think PGC was the last one on the list there. And probably a little bit of a basic, you know, again that PGC. Uh, this one's probably just. Well, interesting the fact that we had this exhaustion of sellers down there and then it starts to build here. Probably got a little bit of a B-way break here, even though it's still in a downtrend there. But starting to see volume come through here. So has had a dust move up there. Again, a little tight contraction there and then the volume again. So that, that's not too bad there. I just probably, you know, that's probably one just to have a keep an eye on here at the moment. So I don't know if I'd be trading that one just yet. Uh, I just put that on there, just some early signs there, maybe, you know, turn around there, maybe a change of character. Uh, but, um, probably just the watch list there. So, I mean, there's so many BCPs in there. Um, look, it, the other one was pretty interesting during the during the last couple of weeks was this MA here as well. See how this is pulled back, pulled back here. So the whole thing has stayed pretty tight, you know, higher in the range as well. So some people ask this, People ask probably about the VCPs, like, you know, where they, you know, oftentimes, like, you can see the VCPs everywhere, but the best ones are sort of when you had a strong move and then the VCP sort of calls up, and it calls up probably in the halves. You think about the stocks run, say, $2, the VCP stays in the top dollar. That's that's what you're looking for. You want to, you know, you want to sort of see it stay in the top half. If they come all the way back down again, they're kind of weaker ones, but you see here, this has had a pretty good run. Pull back here, staying pretty high in the range there. And then look at this BCP, just just tightens up in here. And, and once it once it little once it breaks a little B weight there, it's got one, two, three, four days. So, you know, many being those guys, they'd be selling half of that <coughs> into the three or four days of heat. And look, they might have got stopped out here. Uh, but if you sell some into that heat, you still do pretty well. So, um, yeah, there's plenty plenty of. Uh, Plenty out there as well. Um, what else we got there? So on the that's the quarterly uh, we mentioned there. Um, on the daily there, obviously SLX result was on that on the daily list. <clears throat> so definitely be watching this one here. Um, to me, it seems pretty early here. I don't think this is sort of late move there. So that's a big VCP. So it could be the sort of start of sort of something bigger as well. So yeah, any little pause there, probably keep an eye on that. MTO. There's another BCP. This was on my BCP list, Chris. Well, just look at how look how this was just sitting here. You know, the thing I liked about it was this sat on top of the previous high, so it's run impulsively high here. Some pretty good volume in that last leg, and then the whole thing's gone sideways here for quite a while. This this was actually my BCP. That's the thing with the BCPs; they can sit there for a long time. But sometimes they can congest a lot longer. And you, you, you're waiting for this to pop. Wait for this to pop. That's, that's why you've got to be patient there. Um, like a lot of people who trade these VCPs, you, uh, you, you end up sort of wanting to cheat, try and get in early there, but it can be to your detriment trying to do that because they, they can go sideways or they can meander back for a lot longer than you think. 
just going to wait for them to show their hand there. You know, they really need to be sort of coming out here, showing a bit of volume, starting to break up a little bit of a swing high there, breaking through there. But then once it's, once it's gone above here, to kick on here, I mean, you're talking about three or four big fast days there. So that's that's what Minabini is looking for. He's just looking for this DCP break. And in fact, he's, he's riding a hand, but maybe you look a little cheat in here if he sees a bit of volume there. But he's only probably just touching the edges of the loop there. And he'll be, you know, once it pops here, then he's sort of getting heavier. He'll trade into that heat as well, and then you get less risk on the line there. So just so many VCPs sort of setting up here. Um, GXB as well, another VCP as well. Whole thing tightened up here. Had a pop in the last few days. Other great was because that, that's had a pretty good bounce here. I say a bit of a game changer trade there. Big volume up into here. Pull back. A bit of selling in that first leg. Decent volume on recover. Starts to sort of dry up here now. And then and the whole thing is drying up here. So once you sort of see this consolidation and the volume dry up, that's why it can take a long time here. This might be a thinking here. Some people might have been jumping the gun a little bit early here and then you're sort of stuck in here for a while. So I just gotta wait patiently for these things to well uh, set up a bit. Um BXV sub B L U, other V C P funny that. Um B L U got the right code, yeah. The R S processing. Slow down. Uh, so when you're looking at these, um you just mentioned before if it's a two dollar V C P, ideally we want to see it in that top dollar when you see the contraction. Is that similar to when O'Neill's talking about a cup and handle? Ideally, he likes to see a 30% run before the cup starts being drawn. And then when the handle's being drawn, staying in that top half or the top third and compressing in there as well. Yeah, that yeah. So I know a lot of they, most of those guys use different percentages and they like to see certain stuff there. But I reckon rule of thumb there would be you'd want to see the handle be at least you know, half of the... Uh, of, of the sort of of the of the cup there, uh, and if it's tighter than that, if it's like a third, then then I reckon you're looking red hot as well. So uh, if it stays nice and sort of a uh, lot of color and stuff there, looks looks quite good there. But uh, <clears throat> BLU BLU had a little bit of a pop out of that low there, a bit of a change of character, started just break break up of a few swing highs there. Then the whole thing sort of tightened up after a bit of volume came in. That's that's the key there is to see some of these sort of heavier be a volume um so we saw some heavier volume through here um, up into this sort of high there and then the whole thing sort of just dried up here again and then we started to turn back up again so just maybe a little smallest one there but again just another vcp really sort of setting up there um rul <coughs> again an L CP as well so really you know, had a had a pretty strong move to had a, had a decent pullback then but then what you're seeing there, Chris, is that look at look at look at how the stock rallies first out pulls back. This is yeah. Start you know, slow down the last ten minutes. So McLaren used to use the two words. You know, the two words you used to look at is impulsive and corrective. Okay, so you want to see stocks that are moving up freely and impulsively, and then when they pull back, go through a corrective and it's, it's time like a churning sort of you know time. You know, so. This is going up here like, you know, what's that, six or eight days and then you're, you're peeling back probably twice as many days and only coming back half the range. So, I mean, Clarion used to actually count days. It'd be like you know, eight days up, eight days back there. So the two two times that I look for is like uh, a one for one and a two for one. So it goes up eight days. Oftentimes it'll pull back eight days and then go again. Sometimes it can be twice as many. So you can see like... Uh, I might go up three days and pull back six. I might go up four and pull back eight. Um, see that type of thing all, all the time there. So one for one or two for one, see that um, quite a bit there. But just shows you that sort of, uh, you know, when it's sort of struggling, there's quite a corrective nature there and the volume dries up. That's what we're looking for there. Um, LIC, another one there, probably a bit messier this VCP, just a bit more of a ch churning and sort of stock there. But definitely... VCP sort of set up there. Probably you can always sort of say it's a cup and handle there, but that's that's a little deep that handle. So it's probably not the ideal handle. Um, but has sort of pushed on through there. And 
IIQ, probably not the best VCP, but there is a little bit of a tight little setup in there and a bit of a VCP push through there. Um, thing, thing I like about it here is that move in, in June, that, that was pretty impulsive, you know, up into the high there. Now, there's a big volume through here and it's had a bit of a churning. So you probably prefer to see this be a little bit more come back, you know, only half the range as opposed to, say, three quarters of the range here. But they can still set up and go again here. Um, probably just not going to be as strong as some of the others. If you prefer to see them in the second half, this is probably a good example there of actually chocolate coming back three quarters of the range is not, not as strong as I mean, that TUA. I only come back to out where it really kicked on. So that, that's the that's the big difference there. Um, but you go, yeah, so <clears throat> this is what you're looking for. So impulsive, really, really you know, going up really quickly, really freely, then pulling back and struggling to go down here. So saw this, you can see this sort of, uh, you know, it's range here. Literally, it's, it stayed in the top half of the range, probably only come back a third of the range, and struggled to go down it. And look look through there. No, again, there's just no volume sort of pushing through here at all, you know? So, and then you're impulsive again. Then you're corrective, but the whole thing is just, you know, come back here again. So, what we're looking for is a little B wave break here. You get interested there. So it's congest, congest, little VCP, and then bang, break here. And we've gone again. It's, the beauty of these VCPs, Chris, is sort of if you wait patiently for them to break there, you know, if you're wrong here, you find out really quickly. If you're right, make money quickly. It's all, it's all done quickly. You know, so um, yeah, we don't want to be sort of sitting in their muds trying to you know, wait for our money to be made. We, we want to make our money fast. So, um, yeah, that's the beauty there. You've seen those patterns there, those VCPs. They just, once they sort of break that B wave, they just generally tend to keep on. First three or five days can be really aggressive. So, if you can get set there, get, you know, sell some into that sort of day three or day four heat, take a third off, maybe it pushes into day five, you take the other third off. You've already had a big win there, and you can sort of live a little bit. Um, maybe you get a congestion there, you set up, you can add to it. And your breaks below, you stop yourself out at sort of useful profit. And then you've made two, two thirds is pretty heavy profit. Uh, if it keeps running, if you still get a third on. If it, uh, you know, if it has that pause there, which generally probably, I'd say 70, 80% of them will probably have a pause, have a little congestion there like, you know, like this. So you know, this is here, like, you know, one, two, three in the heat. Comes back here again, congest here again. You think, well, that is setting up again. I might, you know, you buy back on again, then you. That's why you sort of got to keep looking at the stocks just sort of being and getting these setups. They continue to keep coming back and give you a second or third setup all the time. So I've seen it over and over again with, with the 30-30 list press as well is that the ones that sort of stay on the list, they stay on there for a lot longer than, you know, than we all imagine as well. Uh, I can just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep having a pause, you know, impulsive corrective, impulsive corrective. So uh, I don't know sort of it's hard to find Bill McLaren's work, actually. Uh, I, that, I, don't, I haven't met anyone who covers the sort of, you know, like the way that he covered it. Like how, how you, you know, reading a chart, also move and correctly sort of sort of set up there. That's just sort of, um, it, it aligns with the VCP and a lot of the couple of handles that are set up as well. So, um, but yeah, you can, maybe I should do a video maybe next year or something, cover just some of the basics there. Cause I reckon it's just, just fundamental to make money and, and just give us a trade you know stock that's moving impulsively and correct it's just uh, we'll just keep you out of the sort of bad stuff uh, and keep you in the in the, in, in the strongest stuff as well um, amazing taking the mclaren approach to vcps and double handles has obviously helped you identify well is it too steep is it too corrective or is it too impulsive and sort of and analyzing because quite often people will find the pattern and say, I've found one. And technically, yes, it is it. But having that McLaren perspective sort of seems like it helps you identify the better of the VCPs and the better of the cup and handles because you've got that other trading analysis experience. Uh, that probably would be a good video to do. Uh, yeah, it's funny. I was actually reading a book this morning here on the, on the flight into uh, Sydney and uh just looking at sort of like they're covering sort of like you know, rocket stocks. Basically, the stocks sort of had these massive moves there, um, and they all basically sort of um, gapped up to a two, to a new fifty-two week high on a on a 
you know, like an earnings upgrade or, a, or an announcement. So they all, they all tend to pop. But what they sort of did was they, most of them all sort of can guess back. So if they sort of, can be a bit of a game changer, sort of pop and then keep running. But most of them sort of pop, had a little congestion and then broke there. So even if you just waited for like a little three-way pullback, wait for that B-way break and then, you know, buy there. See, that was, that was, that would have been probably 60, 70% of the best trades for like five years ago, sort of when, you know, that market had a massive run there. They all sort of gapped up there. Occasionally, they'll sort of gap up, maybe, you know, maybe a little tight range there and then break up again. Maybe they don't come back in three way, but just either looking for a little, little tap and handle in there or looking for a little sort of pullback and then the B-way break there. Uh, but they all sort of started with that that positive sort of junk there as well. So you, you are, you're looking for the strongest stocks here. It's, it's no, you know, we've got a sort of, um, you know, it's taken me a, a while to, Get my head around it as well, Chris. As well, is that um, yeah, you know, we don't we don't want sort of bottom fishing as well. The problem with bottom fishing is waiting, 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 and it can, it can take three months to set up a base. So even if you pick the low, you know, if you've done all your, you know, and I, I look at a lot of GAN cycles, and, and I've got the ability to sort of the cycles tell me that this could be a low. It's come back to bid level. <clears throat> it's a it's a key level to build from here. I've bought some of those stocks there. Well, unfortunately, then they they go up, but I'm in there for two or three months, basic, before it gets going in. I thought, mate, if I just wait for the, you know, I wait for the zero, one, two, three pattern, wait for the third high low, then just buy it then. I save myself two or three months of work. My entry is maybe slightly worse off, not much worse off, slightly worse off. But then I, I catch all of the enter. I've, I've let someone else sit in there for the two or three months, sort of make no money. I'm making very little money. I catch the loop when it's ready to get going. So that's the thing about your thing about these markets here. You got to think about, um, you know, do, do, do you want to be right? Or do you want to make money? So that's, 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 um, you know, that's got to get your head around that. Human nature, we, we, you know, most of us don't want to be wrong. That's, that's why we, you know, that's why we don't take losses. We can't handle being wrong as, as human beings. So got to, got to get that out of your system. Got to have a stop and play. So you got to accept the losses. Come to terms with actually that, um, you know, that the key to having a winning system is to having losers, having small losers, and having big winners. So you've got to come to come to terms with actually losers there. Um, you've got to try and find the strongest stocks here. You've got to got to basically sort of wait for these sort of you know wait for these stocks to show their hand, big volume, big moves, then tighten up, and then we get the next move there as well. It's just uh, low hanging fruit. So um, yeah, that, that's that's what we got to look for there. Um, the UK bit of a bit, bit of a volatile stock. This one here, up and down, up and down here. Potentially, you know, it's a good volume. The last move there, maybe this one helped. I've been watching this one here, but it hasn't really hit my um, priority here. But we do have this big BCP Chris on the weekly mm. set up here as well. So, um, and on the daily here, we've got set the BCP as well here. So, um, that's pretty wide ranges there. Um, for the final part, this trade here, but this stock, but yeah, but yeah, maybe we'll congest under here, maybe we'll get a little flag here or something, but definitely one to sort of keep an eye on there. But, um, looking interesting, uh, EKW, surprise, surprise, another VCP, uh, pullback, second pullback tighter, third pullback tighter, and then bang, you know, come out of the, come out of the gates here. So they're just everywhere, these, um, VCPs here, XRO. So it's probably not one of the strongest sort of stocks here. Had a had a pull had a base of pullback there. And um I personally don't like them sort of seeing them go to a new low here and then guess the other low, because that's sort of how they can roll over here. But you look at this sort of stock here, I I did sort of um I did add some of this here because it's really had to pull back to the the fifty week moving average there. And we've seen the volume for well, that volume sort of come in here as well. So the volume did come in on the selling end, came in at the low and started to build again. Now, with no sort of zeros, obviously growth stock, sort of growth horizons there, but you can kind of drill in here and see that. Yeah. Look, at the, look at the volume through here. These three or four days in here, it's all volume here. So that's all, that's sort of signs of accumulation taking place here. So then if you want to be patient there, see signs there, you know, what you want to, you know, to me actually, if I'm going to sort of uh, override some of my trading rules there, I like to sort of see 
and the can move. Um, just because sometimes it's, you know, it's like Bill McLaren looks at that impulsive movement and corrected. So this is this is under a bit of pressure here, a bit of selling there, but it's had a bit of a rally here, but because everyone's sort of, you know, freaked out a little bit here and sold into it, just a bit of a change of hands going on as well. So people still freaking out here, but this probably some of the smart money is getting set here because obviously this is sort of one of the you know, high quality sort of growth things. But then what's important is not to see, what well, once it pulls back here, not to see any selling here. We saw here this drifted back here. That's why once I saw this day up here, I thought, oh, this, this doesn't want to go down. Sort of, that, that's had every chance to sort of go to a new rally or so go to a new low. Is that, you know, what McLaren would say is, okay, that's the low. One, two, three days up, maybe three, four, five days up here. And then we go down one, two, three, four, five, six, now six, seven days. Here, we haven't done a new low. So the same amount of time that we've rallied, pulled back at the same time, I have it you know, and actually held the low as well. So that's why it's sometimes just sort of counting how many days up, counting them down here, just 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 sort of gives you an idea to how how weak or how strong the trend is. Because really, we want to see things move up really quickly, go sideways for a long period of time, and they go up there. So. Not, not the best setup there, but sometimes, yes, some sort of setups there. If you're looking for those sort of strongest sort of stocks there, um, they're hard to sort of nail the loads there. But even just waiting for that little patient little B wave there, still probably give you a fair entry there. Um, there's, there's a few other sort of setups there, Chris. I noticed um, Domino's was sort of one here. That, you know, all that big, you know, rectangle there on this setup here. There's so many touches up here. I, I actually tried to train this a couple of times and it sort of did get going. Um, but look, you know, it's popped the range here now. So, you know, that's, that's a decent size here. So that I was at 55 down to 49. So, you know, that's six, five fifty to $6 sort of uh, rectangle range. So once you break that should, should move by the height of that. So we're looking at what, 55 plus another plus six. Here. So you're looking at sort of 60, $65 target on that. So, um, once they break out, that rectangle is pretty, pretty decent. There. So that, yeah, there, there is a BC. Uh, there was a couple of BCPs in there. First one, this one didn't work. Um, then it BCPed again, and this and, and now it, you know, now it has sort of worked here. It's really tightened up here. So, and so sometimes you got to go back for a second or third time there to um you know um, don't be afraid to to go back in there. On the other ones, I thought was pretty interesting. Is a little wee bit nano, bit of a BCP in there, but maybe a little lower in the range, but it is above the fifty. So had a bit of a bounce in there, a bit of volume, pulled back, a bit of a bounce again, pulled back here, use up a bit of time here, a bit of a bounce and volume tightening up here. So just gone through here a moment there. So some good signs there. And um, probably just prefer to see this higher in the range than on the bottom of the range. So stocks that are sitting higher the range, they tend to ones that power on here. So this may not have the strongest move, but still not a bad setup there. We're still seeing Ton of those VCP setups everywhere throughout the market there. Um, I think even LIC might have actually, oh, this a bit of a false break of the low, I think, here, yeah, Chris. Uh, that was the other one that I did sort of see there. Good good volume down there. I uh, think PLS might have done the same. SE2, I think, uh, IGOs there also have done little false breaks as well. I'm going to come back to Kitty Little. So, but what's happening in the market? Um, yeah. So, so good stick. Good week. But you've definitely said a lot of uh, VCPs this week, and in both lists, you mentioned it earlier. Where you're spawn for choice right now. A lot of them have broken out. You've already been set up. You've bought into the coil already. You've added a few new ones to your watch list. Yeah. When your portfolio is fully invested, you've got your maximum risk on. How do you determine? well, okay, I've got a full portfolio here. There are more opportunities coming through. How do you cycle through, okay, this one was good, hasn't quite kicked as I wanted, but there's an A-plus set up right here. How do you cycle or rotate or sell a good trade for a better trade entry? Yeah, so you got to uh, look, you got to keep a bit of your stops up. Obviously, that's, uh, you know, as, it, as your anger stocks are sort of running, hot, running, you know, pressing that. Really got to edge your stops up there. If if your stocks have a bit of a hot run, like if you're sort of your long some of these some of these VCPs pop out of the range pretty hard. They uh, have like that sort of three to you know four you know say three four five days something in that window they're really aggressive sort of pop there. 
I think you're going to be selling, you know, all the pros will be selling into that heat. I basically sort of, uh, you know, take some off the top there. So you've got to be taking a little off the top there. Um, and yeah, just going to be careful not to, I've, in the past there, I've sort of probably gone from one stock to the other. So I've sort of, you know, because it's, there's so much happening at the moment, you know, I'll take this one off and go for this one and that. So you, you, you can, you can over trade here in this period. So what you want to do is you want to sort of try and slow it down. I still think staying concentrated, the best setups, trading those setups you're in, but try and hit those into strength there. You, you, you might be better off actually selling some of the heat. And then, you know, if that, if those come back, you could guess again, you can put it back on again. You know, the ones you're already in, ones are already sort of, the ones are already working as well. Um, yeah, unless you sort of see something else, the right, the right sort of sector there, look, you know, but it's it's a time to be sort of selective now because everything's sort of off, everyone's hot, market's getting bullish, everyone's, everyone's, you know, after a year of everyone being bearish, they've all suddenly sort of bullish here. So that, that's always a warning sign as well. So it's going to be cool. Okay, we'll, we'll see. I wouldn't surprise me to sort of see the market fall off about the next sort of three to you know five days after having a pretty red hot run. So pretty pretty common now to have a bit of a pause in your so I expect to sort of see them to pause a bit, maybe run into um December and end of sort of you know, end of the year, early January again. Um but yeah, just just gonna manage the process here. Um yeah. Probably be overselected there with so many stocks there. So um, just just be wary of them sort of, you know, trading too many. That's the thing. If you, if you start to sort of, you know, if you've got eight or ten sort of stocks on, then you, uh, it's, you've got to sort of manage them all and then your eyes are sort of all over the place. You know, that's, that's why I like being concentrated sometimes. It's sort of better off taking some of that cash or the eggs back a bit. There's nothing worse than having a you know, few days up and the thing else humming and then, all of a sudden, you get a little pullback there. And it can really sort of, you know, cool off for a, you know, the first day down off the highs, normally a bigger one. And then you might, then it might tighten up over the next three or four days there. But then you're like, oh, should have sold into that beat, you know. So that's why you got to sell some into the heat. So just, it's important just for the mental mental game as well. Um, you used to sort of sell, uh, uh, you know, some of the holdings uh, in, into those really sort of, you know, fiery moves, Eddie. Even like your, you know, you might be looking at your portfolio there and you go, gee, okay, they're all looking pretty good. They're all running hot, you know. Um, this one here has had a pretty good run. Just start to slow down. Okay, maybe I'll just take that one off and, you know, take a little bit off, you know, a couple of litres there and I'll just, I'll sit back and, you know, so maybe I'll take a third, you know, I might take, a, you know, 25 to third of my holdings off, cash up into that really, you know, heavy sort of heat. And then, then you might see the market pull back again and then, yeah. Then you can sort of uh, put it back on again, or maybe something else will set up. Like maybe another perfect BCP will set up that hasn't set up there. While well, those sort of stocks that are already been running have another little tight congestion again. So, but it's just good for our game to be, um, uh, with, yeah, just trimming something into that sort of heat there. But yeah, you just don't want to be out the first day. That's you, know, you get one big day up there. You don't want to be sort of selling into that. So you really want to be sort of seeing like a three or five day uh, pop, something, something. I mean, pretty decent. That's a good insight into how to manage those breakout trades and when your sport choice, your portfolio is full. So I would say thank you very much, Gary Glover, for sharing those insights. Thanks, Chris. Uh, pick Gary's mentioned it tight, as we say. What's the goal was that? Pick right and sit tight. Pick right. Yeah, that's, you know, that's been the motto for me this week. So, so I had a three three days of sort of calling up, you know, sort of, uh, you know, but um, in the end, they sort of broke out and they went hot. So, uh, yeah, so just got to make sure we sort of, you know, do trade those stronger stocks. So they can coil there, they can sort of churn. Um, but if they're not sort of losing too much and they're just nice and tight there, that's that's the ideal sign there. So we're looking for that pop. And then we've, that's, after we've had that sort of three or four days, we want to sell a little bit of that heat. Well, there's a whole tactic as to how to take the profits in these kind of markets, especially if you're sitting tight, you've got the right ones to coil and then it breaks out. And part of a lot of those strategies that Gary's talking about are those setups of the volatility contraction pattern. There's a whole playlist on the right where we go into that one and a fair few other strategies. Also, Gary's been talking about this run into the year end. He's been talking about it for a few weeks in his weekly report, which we talk about on Tuesdays. That playlist is also on the right. Over on the left is his X or his Twitter handle if you want to follow him there. 